Today we're going to have a look at a merger between Ithaca Energy and e &I. It's in the North Sea and it's going to create a company that has combined the largest UK reserve space. So here's the headline from Keyfax Energy. It came out on the 27th of March 2024. Ithaca Energy announces potential combination with e &I's UK business. And the details, well, pause the video to read them, but it was a four-week exclusivity period to combine Ithaca and e &I's UK assets, but excluding e &I's Irish Sea and also their CCS assets. Now, the e &I UK business was to go to Ithaca, and e &I take on 39% shares in Ithaca. Now, that leaves Delic Group, the Israeli parent company of Ithaca, with 50% uh, shareholding in Ithaca Energy. As I say, pause the video if you want to see more details. So with the four-week exclusivity period ended on the 23rd of April 2024, the deal was announced. Yes, that indeed Ithaca Energy and e &I's UK assets have indeed come together in a deal worth $940 million or £754 million. It's uh, combining 37 producing assets and giving some in the region of 80 to 87,000 barrels of oil equivalent production in 2024. Pause the video if you want to read the details on the deal. So we thought we'd take a quick look back at the share prices. On the upper one here, Ithaca Energy, well, it looks like they completely plummeted. But look at the scale on the graph here, and you can see they've dropped by about 15% or so down to this current. And we'll be interested to see where the share price goes in the next few days. For e &I, I don't think this rise was anything to do with the Ithaca Energy deal. Lots of other things going on in e &I's world, so uh, we won't read too much into that. Here's an analysis undertaken by Wellagence, and if you put the two companies together, you can see, well, it becomes the top company by remaining reserves on the UKCS. That's millions of barrels of oil equivalent on the y-axis there. So looking at the details of it, and you can see here the green dots, not highlighted too well on this particular slide here, but you can see West of Shetland's Northern North Sea and Central North Sea, Outer Murray Firth region. But the yellow dots, they're the E&I assets, and you can see a lot of HPHT in the Elgin Franklin, Isabella Jade sort of area. We've got the Cygnus gas field down the Southern North Sea. I'm not sure if Hewitt's going to be involved because I think that's seen as a carbon capture and a storage asset, which is not included in this deal. So this is the Ithaca portfolio. Now they have operated assets, Cambo, undeveloped. Uh, is it going to go forward for development? Also a major partner in the undeveloped Rosebank field west of Shetland. Then a non-operated partner in Shehalyan. Looking down, um, Captain Alba. These are major assets for them. And then there's the, the Stella, the Vorlich Harrier sort of hub area that Ithaca operate. It's also worth noting the Cambo license has recently been granted a, a license extension through to end of March 2026. Now, does ENI's involvement in this, does it de-risk the Cambo development? Does it enable more investment under the EPL, sort of uh, offsetting the windfall tax? Without Ithaca assets, well, ENI really have Isabel as the main investment opportunity with Ithaca, then ENI are exposed to Cambo and Rosebank. And does this herald or accelerate the final investment decision for these field developments? Subscribe to Trove News and follow developments as they become public. Thanks for watching. Please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, forward this video to your network and uh, ring the bell. Hope to see you back on our channel before too long. Bye for now.